So this is a problem that's a pretty involved op optimization problem. And the situation that's described is we've got this oil rig out in the water and we've got this tank that's inland and we want to try to connect the oil rig to the tank with a pipeline. Uh, but the catch is it costs a lot of money to build the pipeline underwater and significantly less money to build the pipeline on land. And we don't necessarily want to minimize the length of the pipeline. We want to minimize the cost of its installation. And so if you read the problem statement here, it tells us that the rig is actually 25 miles out in the water in that first sentence. And at the end of that sentence, it tells us that the tank is five miles inland. The shoreline runs east-west, so here's my shoreline. And the tank is eight miles to the east of the rig. Uh, so that's why I have the eight down there tells us the prices, $50,000 per mile to construct a pipeline under the water, a lot less, only $20,000 per mile to, dis to construct it on land. What we're going to do to build this pipeline is build it in a straight line from the rig to a point on the shoreline, and then in another straight line from that point the rest of the way to the tank. What point on the shoreline should be selected to minimize the total cost of the pipeline? So. One thing that you might be thinking is that it, it seems like it might be beneficial to be in the water for the least amount of time and just build straight from the rig toward the shoreline and then from that point on the shoreline that's north of the rig the rest of the way to the tank. Uh, that might in fact be the case. We can definitely do a little bit of analysis with uh, a sign chart to try and figure out if that really is what we have going on within this situation. Um, but before we can really do anything with a sign chart or, or build a function to take the derivative of, we need to kind of make this diagram a little bit more useful. So I basically turned this overall diagram into two separate triangles. And the one addition that I made to the diagram that's here, uh, other than these roots that you see right here, is I define the variable x. And I define x to be the, the horizontal distance from the rig over to the spot on the shoreline where we were going to emerge from the water with our pipeline. And then the rest of this distance right here uh, would have been the full eight miles from here to here minus the x miles that we've already gone right here. And so I have these two right triangles and I just used the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the hypotenuse of each would be. And that's really the most important piece of either triangle because the hypotenuse of the bottom triangle is the length of the pipeline that's being built in the water. And then the hypotenuse of the of the upper triangle is the length of the pipeline that's being built on the land. Now if in fact we do want to build straight from the rig to the shoreline and then the rest of the way to the tank with a vertical pipeline, uh, the calculus analysis should kind of back that up. Uh, but what I did before leaving this screen and doing that analysis is I went ahead and I developed my total cost to build on land. So here's the length of the pipeline that's going to be built on land just using the Pythagorean theorem once I had these two sides on that triangle labeled. $20,000 per mile times that length and then $50,000 per mile times this length right here uh, was going to be the total cost of building under the water. The total overall cost would just be the sum of those two individual costs. And so what I thought was, well, it, it makes sense to, to realize that we're not going to be building uh, to an x value that's negative, because if we were building to an x value that's negative, that means we're building to the left initially and then clear back this direction. That's definitely not going to minimize cost. Similarly, we're not going to build to an x value that's above 8. We're not going to build over to a spot here on the shoreline and then back to the tank. We're installing too much pipeline. We're spending too much money if that's what we choose to do. It seems safe to say that we're either going to build straight from here to here and then the rest of the way to the tank, uh, or the other extreme would be from here to maybe like right here in a straight line the rest of the way of the tank or at a point in between which is the way I kind of have it in the diagram. And so what I did was I took this function, this cost function that I wanted to find the minimum value of and I took its derivative and, and the derivative is pretty big, pretty nasty. It's, it's just a couple of chain rules. Uh, this root is really one half power so I multiplied the coefficient by one half turning it into a ten thousand subtracted one from the one half got myself a negative one half as the power left this inner function right there and then here you see the derivative of the inner function derivative of this is zero the derivative of this is another little chain rule multiply by the power of two subtract one from it 
inner function stays there. Derivative of 8 minus x is what you see there. I added on to that the derivative of this term. The derivative of this term right here is another chain rule, a little bit simpler because it's not a chain rule within a chain rule this time around. So I, I basically started it the same way. I multiplied the coefficient by 1 half, subtracted 1 from that power, inner function stayed there times the derivative of 625 plus x squared, which just ends up being 2x. I'm looking for critical numbers. So I realized that I want to set my derivative equal to 0. And so when I set my derivative equal to 0, I, I didn't want to try to evaluate that by hand, solve that by hand. So I went ahead and I graphed my derivative on the calculator, found when the graph was, z was 0. And that happened at 5.109. I wanted to build a sign chart to analyze what's going on with the sign of dc dx in between 0 and 8. dc dx represents the rate of change of cost. And so what I see is going on with this graph. This is a graph of dc dx. It's a graph of the derivative. My derivative is negative. I have negative y values on this graph from 0 to 5.109. What that means is that cost, the function this is the derivative of, cost is decreasing from 0 to 5.109. And then on the other side, we see these positive derivative values. And that indicates that cost is going to be increasing from 5.109 the rest of the way to 8. So I have that kind of written out down here at the bottom, what the sign chart tells me verbally. And that implies that the spot to emerge from on the shoreline with the pipeline in order to minimize the cost of its installation is going to be 5.109 meters to the right of the rig. I guess one thing I need to elaborate a little bit more fully before we close out this video is why I don't need to really worry about zero being the spot that I'm going to build to on the shoreline to minimize the cost of the pipeline. Well, the sign of the derivative is, is negative on this entire stretch of the graph. And so we, we said this verbally, but the significance of this means we're going to have some cost if we let x be zero, and that cost is going to decrease, 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 as indicated by a negative rate of change of cost, the whole way from zero the rest of the way to this x. Uh, and then it's going to increase from this x the rest of the way to eight. And that's why our minimum cost definitely is going to occur at emerging from the water at this value of x.